Hello, ladies. Can you hear me? Ow. Hmm. I know you're out there. Thank you. Hi, Elizabeth. I wasn't sure because a couple of times back, for some reason, I wasn't getting the audio. I don't know what I did different, but at least it's working. That's good. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. I'm actually kind of pooped. I have been moving rocks all day. But it's, you know, it's that good kind of tired where you're kind of achy, but you had a good time and you got stuff accomplished. So I can't complain. So now it's my unwind time. And so I unwind having fun <laughs> with, with, uh, with my journals. So I had a couple of questions I wanted to go over with some of you that are working on it with me. So I'll wait and see who shows up before I ask the questions, but I've been getting some stuff done. Um, I decided against doing my own marble marbling paper because I knew that would just take too long. By the time I did it, you know, I have a very short attention span. I just want to get this done and then I'll practice on that. And maybe on my next one, I'll do my own papers. So um, I had some already. Um, that were part of, hey, Kathy, that was part of, um, what was it part of? I guess it was some kind of, I don't know where I get, I mean, I don't remember I get half the stuff. I think I got it at a junk shop and it was some papers and in those papers were some copies of, um, of the marble papers. So I do have some copies of them. They're not real, they're copies, but I don't care. It's all right. It's all right. This isn't original either. So anyway, um, some of those, let me see. I've got a little bit of everything all over the place here. I didn't, I played a little bit yesterday after, after working in the yard and I didn't put anything away. So it's kind of all scattered. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> I need all the help I can get. Now, I don't know if you remember, but the other day when we were looking at this, I told you I had some kind of trim that this reminded me of. Well, I found it. It's not identical, but I can still see how it kind of sort of reminded me of it. It's that right there. So it kind of sort of has a little bit of the colors, but not exactly. Um... But I think I'll end up, unless I find something I like better, I think I'll just end up using this as some kind of a wrap, I guess. I know, Luz. I worked really hard today. And I was sitting here looking at stuff, and I was already, like, halfway getting sleepy. And I said, no, this is too early for me to be sleepy. I better do something now. So, anyway, so this was the one I was talking about. So I think I'll put, like, a whole bunch of wraps around it and that'll be this high but I think it goes hi Tamar all right so I found that that was good so I can use that on it somehow I made me some more um tape because I ran out so I made me some more of that yesterday so I got plenty to use and then, oh, okay. So remember I had said that I was going to put cardboard, you know, cardboard here because it's, it's very lumpy and it's lumpy from the other fabric. And so I was going to put a, put a piece of cardboard. So then I thought, well, you know, these are pretty hard. And of course, obviously it comes out of here. So it fits pretty good. So that's what I decided to do. I took one of these and I put a cabinet card in it. Hi, Patricia. 
um, I put a card, cabinet card in here. So once I put the signatures in, um, then I'm going to use, I'm going to glue this down to the front cover. And that will be what, you know, covers up all the mess of everything. And it still kind of holds true because, you know, it can, it's an original. It comes from the album itself. And I think it'll look kind of cool as, the cover. So that's a decision I already made. So ooh, and that's tearing. I got to put some tape there. So that, oh, that is a done deal. Hi, Lisa. Okay, Luz, you have fun. Be busy. You're always busy. I know that. Oh, where's my tape? Hey, Louise. I was just telling the ladies, I am pooped. I moved rocks. And the other part of the day that I didn't move rocks, I had to go grocery shopping, which I hate, hate, hate shopping. So, so I was sitting down here and I was getting relaxed, but I relaxed in a practically fall asleep relaxed. I'm not ready to go to bed. So I figured I better start doing something. So I came over here and I'm starting to do something. <laughs> Thank you, Luz. Hey, Samantha. Oh, good tomorrow. That's one of my favorite things, that elegant writer. That is so much fun. You know, I really don't like grocery shopping. I used to love to cook. Love, 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 love to cook until my husband became diabetic. And now I hate it because... I kind of cook like I do my art. I throw everything in it. And I never do it, you know, two times the same. I like experimenting with odd flavors and stuff. And my husband was really good about that because he loves eating that way. And he's one of those kind of guys that, you know, like say you throw some ginger in and some kind of nutmeg or something somewhere. He'll sit there and say, hmm, did you put ginger and nutmeg in here? <laughs> he notices flavors. He doesn't just swallow the stuff. So it was fun to cook for him. It ain't fun no more, let me tell you. So it's just like a piece of chicken and some vegetables. How boring is that? <laughs> it's, I hate it. <laughs> a personal shopper. Mm. I'm too much of a control freak. <laughs> See, that's probably why, Louise, you don't like cooking because um, the fun is taken out of it. You have everything so controlled, you know. Anyway, so this is a cardboard piece. Go, You guys that just joined us. I figured out this is what I'm going to do uh, once I get my signatures in. This is going to go in the front, and that's how I'm going to cover up all the mess. So I got that figured out. And then... I did this with, and this is where I'm going to have you guys help me out today. I did this with one of those pieces. I put, um, I used some of that stuff that reminded me of the front. And then I put some lace across here. And then I strung this in the center. And so, um... So obviously this is going to be sitting somewhere. And so the papers behind it, um, I thought maybe we could choose together. I picked about, I think it was four of them that I, I liked the look. Completely different looks, but um, I like them. So I thought, well, we'll, we'll have another vote and see if... Um, If you guys pick my favorite, I'm going to go with whatever you pick 
because I'm happy with all of them. So it doesn't really matter. OK, so this one is a. So what I'm doing is I'm going to create a page just so you understand. It's real simple. I'm just going to create a page that goes like this here and I'm just going to extend it, you know, all the way over. So it, it covers up this hole. And and so this is going to be a page. I'm going to create a hinge and all that. This will be a page like that. So I just so what we're doing is we're just picking the background for um, this. So this one is a. And this one is B. See, they all kind of look kind of cool, completely different look, but at least I think they do. <laughs> at least I think they do. Okay, so you guys can see it's they're completely different. Some of them brighten it up, some of it make it kind of dramatic. But um, I like them all. So um, okay, so let's let's go over one more time. This is D. Yeah, let me see. Hi, Jill. Did I already say hello, Samantha? I know I miss people. And this one's B. And then that one's A. Yes, decisions. I'm not going to make all the decisions for myself. <laughs> hey, Mary. Uh, okay, so what are we thinking? I better write this down. It's going to it's going to get away from me. Okay. I see a C, a B, a D, a C. Oh, where am I? This is your movie. C, A, A, D, C, A. A, uh oh. <laughs> oh, another A. A, C, I don't know if your favorite's not winning. You better vote. That's all I can say. Because right now it's A. Come on, we've got we've got 30 people here. I've got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Only half of you have voted. Come on. Oh, here we got one more. Very good. Oh, and they go for A. I think A is going to win. Oh, another A. You like the contrast, yeah. We get another A. We've already got 10 for A. Yay. Like I said, I like them all. I think my two favorites was, um, if I had to choose, was A and C. I kind of liked uh, 
the drama of C, but like you guys said, I like the contrast of A. And this does kind of get lost, but I think that's kind of what I mean by the drama. It's sort of like you have to, you have to search it out. <laughs> oh, okay. She's, she wants to sneak in another D. It's okay because poor D only has three. So you guys can do it four or five times. It's still not going to win. <laughs> poor thing. Poor D. Aw. <laughs> I need a drink. I need a drink. Well, I think A's the winner. Oh, Janet says, C! Yay! At least C got five. It can't feel so bad. <laughs> well, I'll use them elsewhere in the in the journal. All is not lost. It's just we'll go with um, it looks like we're going with A. Even if everybody else votes, I don't think they can A will um will lose. All right. So, whoever was late, too bad. You don't get to vote. <laughs> you don't get to vote. Okay, so this is going to stay. This one's going to be the winner. Yay! It's the winner. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, I'm going to use these um, elsewhere in the journal. So, that'll work out just fine. Okay, so okay, so we've got two things that are already decided. This is going to be used here um, as as far as these um, pages from the from the album are concerned. Because I was trying to figure out how am I going to incorporate them. So that one is incorporated that way. This is going to be that um, cardboard that I glued to the front of the page um, to cover up all the mess. So that one's taken care of. And then I worked on this one. And I put a cabinet card on this one. And it's on both sides. And I picked this because I just, because I liked it. It was dark and kind of mysterious. And um, so I picked that one. And then when you open it up, I like how that looked right there also. So I'm I'm sorry, but I made the decision on my own. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I made the decision. So um so I haven't really decided yet how I'm gonna cover up the back. It's probably gonna be, you know, the same with one of these somehow, and then either another photograph or just some paper or something. I haven't quite figured that one out yet. Or I might do something totally different and put some fabric back here with a pocket or something like that. But um, my mind hasn't gotten there yet. But, but this is like this. And then what else did I do? Hold on. Oh, I cut these up. The, the square ones um, that had the four, because I ended up putting this on the big one. So I decided, well, I'm not going to do that on these. And I had some, let's see if you can see them. I had some, um, what do you call that? My brain's dead, like usual. It'll come to me. I keep wanting to say vellum. You know it's not vellum. But anyway, you know what that is. <laughs> acetate. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So I had these pieces of acetate. And they were already printed on. And they were about, I don't know, six by six. So I just cut them up and slid them inside, you know, where the picture goes. But it was all torn up. So I just put some of the tape. 
And I just thought it looked kind of cool. So somewhere I'm going to glue this down and then I'm going to put this over it. And with some fabric, I'll create that into a hinge and that'll just be um, just for effect. It's not going to be of any, you know, of any use or anything, but um, just to look cute. <laughs> Just a cute factor. <laughs> and and I, I made two of them. Here's another one that I made. And, and I'll put that on there. And we'll have two cute factors. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. So that's that. And then the other side, I just put in some. Um, it, it's thick like. Um, it was a folder. It was some kind of a work folder that um, was used um, for keeping information about renters. So I just cut out some of the sections that had some lines. And so this can be used as a little card to, um, to write on. And I had a few pieces left over uh, from the acetate. So I just glued the little pieces on on here in the front and the back just so I could use up all the pieces parts I think I used them all I think so I don't see any around here so that's what I've been up to so far and I think that will end up looking kind of cute too so <laughs> turn what into pockets Turn these into pockets? How do you make pockets out of hard cardboard? I don't know how to do that. I don't know. See, you give me ideas and I have I don't have a clue how to turn those into pockets. I only know how to turn them into doors, peekaboo doors. <laughs> oh, I see. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I guess I don't like things being stuck down. I like things that move. And then if I just glue it on the bottom, then to me, they're just stuck. I'll, I'll have to think about that. I will think about that. Maybe I'll do one stuck and one moving. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, so these four, as far as the little decorating part, I'm done. I'm not going to do no more. At least that's what I say right now. <laughs> I, I always change my mind, so that really doesn't mean anything. Oh, the back piece. Oh, see, I'm a little slow today. I told you I'm tired. Okay, so this would have function. And then psst, I get you. Okay, see, I'm a little slow. That's why I have you guys around to help me out. I'm a little slow. And what else? I think that's about it as far as what I've done. And then here and there, I just, you know, glued down some different papers where you could write on and I'm still doing that. Oh, I had some other pieces and I just created a little hinge like that. So whoever ends up being the owner of this, you know, they can write or draw or put a picture or something. And then that goes over there. And what else? I know I did some stuff. I can't remember what it all was. 
Oh yeah, here and there, I just put little, little places to put stuff, to hide stuff. I like to hide things. I guess that was all the little, I think that's as far as I got. That was just a little bit that I did yesterday. Yeah, I guess that's it. Peekaboo. So now, oh, there's another acetate, another piece. All right, so we got to figure out. Um, if it gets too chunky, what to take out and what, if I want to use some of these papers, because I'm finding stuff I want to stick in, but it's already about as full as it can be. So that means I gotta, I think it is. That means I gotta, if I find something else I want to put in there, I have to take something else out. And that's going to be the problem. Because see right now, I think it's just right. Um, well, maybe a little bit more could go in there. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe a tiny bit can go in there. Because once you put this, um, the signatures together, they do flatten, you know. They do flatten some, somewhat. So I was thinking of the ones that we didn't pick, I was just going to um, glue these together. You know, so I can have a front and back. I do have another one I can glue to the back of that one. So that those could be pages in there. And this is one of my favorite papers of all time. I just love that paper. I'm not sure if I'll use those kind of bright. Maybe I would copy dye it or something. Um, I like this too. I want to use this in here somewhere. Even if it's just glued down somewhere or, you know, put in with a paper clip or something. And I just like these two. I don't know why. But I do. And then this lady, I think she goes for the time period. I'll put one of her. And that lady, too. So anyway, so we're talking, you know. One, two, three, four, five, six, probably like six pages, which would be two more to each signature. And if it's too bulky, then I'll just take out some of the plain ones, I guess, is what I'll do. So I need to cut these down. Oh, I better read. I'm getting bad again. I'm not reading again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not the frame piece. Oh, yeah, I, I got that part. Okay. Thanks, Jill. I am a junk maker, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, Annette, I've showed a couple of times already how to do the tape. Um, I can tell you. Hey, Jennifer. Um, oh, thank you, Janice. Thank you. Um, all I do is I get some wax paper and put down, let me find it, clear tape. I should know. I already said that wrong. Clear tape is that foggy stuff. This is transparent tape. You can get it at the dollar store, Dollar Tree, I should say. Maybe the dollar store too, but I get it at the Dollar Tree. And it, it, it has to say transparent. So it's not the foggy stuff. 
And then I just um, put the tape on the wax paper. And then I use, da -da -da, did you get it? And then I use amber shellac. And I, you know, you can get a brush. Sometimes I use this little makeup sponge, whatever I have. And then I just put it on there. It dries with to the touch within maybe 10 minutes or so, depending on your weather and humidity. And then I put a second coat. And, um, you know, however dark, how dark you want it or how light you want it. And I usually put two coats, and that's enough for me. And it's going to get all wobbly and warbly, and it's going to go underneath, and but that's what makes it look cool. So don't try to make it perfect because it's not, then it's not going to look cool at all. And don't make, um, don't make a whole, whole bunch to, um, you know, to have it. Like I did make a bunch. I, I made all of this a couple of days ago, but I intend to use it. And because I left it one time, it was over like a week and the um, between the, the, the tape itself and the stickiness of the shellac, even the um, wax paper started to stick on the bottom of the tape, which is not good. So um, do it in batches that you're going to use within a day or so. Um, don't don't make it, you know, way ahead of time because you're just going to frustrate yourself because it's going to stick. And that's all you do. And you can also use I've also used um, alcohol inks, but I prefer the color that this gives the alcohol inks that I use. Let me show you the colors that I use. Came out a little, a little too dark for me. Although some people preferred that look when I made both some people preferred the alcohol ink to the shellac, but I preferred the shellac myself and the colors that I used was caramel Butterscotch Latte and there was one other color. What was it? Oh, yeah and ginger and I just squirted it on and mushed it around, you know, real technical kind of stuff. And um, I think these came in a kit. I had them forever. I don't even know if they still make these colors. This is probably like five years ago. So, um, so you can use these to any kind of alcohol ink, I guess. But like I said, I'm partial to the shellac. Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer, you picked the winner. B. <laughs> She knows how to pick the winner. Okay, so I don't need two. I only need one. So this will go in there somewhere. I even like the bath. Isn't that cool? So this will go somewhere. And I need to cut that off. Let me get this out of the way for right now. Put this over here. There we go. Can't get that over there, Jennifer? No, there isn't a... Um, nobody sells it? Oh, I wish I could remember the name. I came across a Facebook group. 
Oh, you're not on Facebook. Um, I forgot. But anyway, for those of you that are in Canada, I'll have to look it up again. Or you guys can look it up. There is a group of ladies that do selling, um, you know, online. And they're just in Canada. And they only sell in Canada so that they can, you know, obviously not pay so much for all of the shipping and that kind of stuff. So I thought that was kind of cool. They're supporting each other. Can't remember what it was called now. Oh, we'll see. Okay. This is what happened. I know this stuff. <laughs> it's what it's going to be one of my long stories. So get comfortable, get your tea, get your coffee, put your feet up. And I'll tell you the story. Okay. The company that owned, that's a past tense that owned seven gypsies is about 45 minutes from me. Those of you that know Shannon Green, you may remember that she moved up to Northwest, the state where I am, and was working part-time for the, the company that owns seven gypsies. All right. And they supplied... Michaels, they supplied um, um, Hobby Lobby, and some of their papers were under a different name, but it was still their papers, and they supplied them. All right, so I have to guard my words. I don't want to get sued. Um, the people that owned Seven Gypsies... Um, Uh, um, <laughs> they, they were mismanaging their company and through their mismanagement, um, they lost, um, various, um, what's the word I'm trying to say? There's a word. There's a word. I think I don't want that the full length. Anyway, they lost contracts, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And so Michaels was one of them. They still have a few things in there. But anyway, they ended up selling it, selling the the contents of their of their company, their inventory. So there's a new company up in the same area that has all of their um, inventory, which is, you know, all of these papers and all that kind of stuff. And then they have stuff that um, doesn't sell anymore. That they're not printing anymore. And as far as I know, those papers, they only sell them at, at their, they opened up a brick and mortar it used to be the other company. It was just all through all the other companies that they sold them in different stores and stuff. I think they're still dealing with uh, Tuesday morning because I still see the stuff in Tuesday morning. And then they, they sell the stuff in their store. And I guess they're trying to come up with some new stuff, too. I went up there, I don't know how many months ago. It's been several. It's been several months. It was something like, I don't know, I keep thinking like in June or something like that. I went up there to, to see the new store and see their inventory and stuff like that. I hope it works out for them. They were thinking of opening a store here in my town. So if they do, that'll be fun. Um.
Let me read again. <laughs> yeah, I think that was it, Louise. Junk Journal Canada Marketplace. Yeah, I think so. Rachel Jennifer gets on Facebook. There won't be no stopping her after that. Yes, Janice, the assets, yes. And I'll inventory the papers because we went over to that place. They had to get everything out from where the storage was, and they had to go um, and move it all into a new building. And so lots of the stuff was just in boxes, and, and um, Shannon and I were going through the boxes. It was almost as fun as dumpster diving. <laughs> Oh, I hope you find a good Tuesday morning, Louise. They're all different. Um, I see stuff that people get at Tuesday morning, and my Tuesday morning doesn't have any of that stuff. I mean, nothing. About the only thing that my Tuesday morning has that is um, is nice looking are the napkins. They have oodles and oodles and oodles of napkins. But when it comes to the other stuff, it's very limited. So, um, but. Before you get there, make sure they have more than one and hit them all within a certain radius because they all have different stuff. It's kind of strange. Yeah, hunt them all down because they're all different. Even like um, the Dollar Tree. Some people will find some really cool stuff, stickers or papers or things. And, um, and not every store has it. They all have different stuff. Even in my own town, I have four um, Dollar Trees, and none of them have the same stuff. I mean, they have some things that are the same, but they they aren't duplicates of each other. They all have something different, which is kind of fun. At least I have different ones to go to. If I only had one, then it would be frustrating. Okay, so those are going in there. What else was I going to put in there? I distracted myself like usual. That's going in there. And I want to glue these together and put those in there Okay, so I have a friend that now she's not into anything I do. She's she's got her own stuff. I don't know. She doesn't even have a hobby. There's a lot of people that don't have any hobbies at all. I don't think she has one. But she appreciates <laughs> how much I'm into all the stuff I do. Well, she found me another album. Holy moly. She doesn't live close here else, you know. I'd be going where she goes to shop. Different towns, I guess, have a different age group or something of people that live there or uh, a certain amount of wealth or I don't know what the difference is depending on the communities you live in, what kind of, you know, garage sales and estate sales you have. It sure does differ. <laughs> Yeah. And what did I do with it? Where did I put it? So she says she's going to keep on a lookout. I told her I only want chunky ones because I want to alter them. I don't want nice, pretty ones. And then I'll feel bad. Um, 
You know, Louise, I've seen so many sales lately. They're becoming a blur. I don't remember if I saw it or not. Was it in good condition or bad condition? If it was good condition, I probably just, just dismissed it because she probably was asking a lot of money for it. I really don't remember. I can't remember if I was at her sale. <laughs> oh, all filled with pictures. Well, that's out of my price range. Did she sell it? Oh, good. Because I remember her saying on one of her sales that she thought she paid too much for some things that the guy saw her coming. <laughs> and I told her, I said, remember, people come to, to live sales not to pay retail. <laughs> If you want to pay retail, they'll go to their antique shop and go shopping. At least you don't have to pay for shipping if you go to a local antique mall. Oh, well, that's good. Well, somebody got a good deal. I was thinking the other day, all these people that have all these sales, and they're there for hours and hours, right? And you may only want a certain thing, and you're sitting there waiting, and then it's gone so long that the seller, and rightfully so, gets tired and says, okay, well, it's over. And meanwhile, you know, you've been waiting like six hours for something that you thought that they were going to sell. And they go, oh, no. I'll do that next month. And you're like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> and get all like, um, so, and I'm getting ready to, you know, as soon as all these people stop selling all this stuff, um, there's a bunch of um, stuff that I've already used. I've bought it. I've used it. And now I have leftover, like whether it's fabric or paper, or whatever it is. Or, and napkins. I mean, you know, because you can't just buy one. You have to buy the package when you buy them new. So I thought, hey, how about if I did um, did a sale? Let me know what this sounds like. I mean, not what it sounds like, but it sounds good. If, like one day, whatever date it was, the only thing I sold was napkins. That way, you don't want napkins, you don't show up. If you like napkins, well, you know, that's the day you show up. And then another day, if I have a bunch of jewelry stuff, you know, beads and things that you make up, dangles and stuff, only sell that. And that way, if you're interested in it, you show up. If you're not, you don't waste your five hours waiting for your favorite thing to show up. <laughs> But then I thought, you know, most of us um, are spontaneous shoppers, right? So if you don't give them options, then maybe people won't show up, which limits your spontaneous shoppers from buying the napkins they really don't want but can't live without <laughs> because they don't show up because they're going to wait until you have doilies. I don't know. I think I'm talking myself out of it. It sounded like a good idea before I said it out loud. I'm always a dead devil's advocate. <laughs> Jill, where have you been? That's what I was telling you. You could have done with some of your stuff. You still can do it. It is like a big deal. I mean, a really big deal. 
people are making a living off of it. Hey, if you want to, I can do it with you. I think you could sell a lot of your stuff. I'm dead serious. We need to talk. We need to talk. Especially if you offer them at the prices you were going to offer them in your garage sale. And then you can get rid of them now instead of later. Yeah, just don't auction my stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but seriously, like, let's talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. Oh. Speaking of which, I have to call my parents. I have to talk to them in like two weeks. I guess nothing's burned down in your area, Jill. You guys are all still safe. I talked to them after you guys had the power the or the possible voluntary power out, outage. But not lately. Not since all the fires north of L.A. Oh, that's good. Yeah, Jill lives in the same town where my mom and dad live right now. If I had money, I would live over there. You have to have, you have to have, um, Either own something that you own for a long, long time, so your mortgage is low, <laughs> or have a really good job so you can afford rent. <laughs> it's just crazy over there. I talked to some of my friends. I don't know how they do it. They don't know how they do it. And a lot of people leave, so... My parents' mortgage is, is like 28 years old, so it's nothing compared to what it would, you know, their comparable home would be if you bought it today. They couldn't afford to live there, you know, if they hadn't lived there forever. Okay, I like that look right there. I don't know about you guys, but I'm liking it. Hey, where'd my lady go? I lost my lady. Hmm. Where did I put her? Here's the other. Oh, here she is. Yeah, it's crazy, Jill. It's insane. I, I joke. I mean, I joke. I almost practically cry. But, um. My husband, husband, okay, you'll appreciate this, Jill. You'll really appreciate this. Okay, this was 19, 1990, I guess. All right. Now, see, now I already forget the names of streets and highways and everything. I'm, I'm a total blank. But you know when you're going just outside of Escondido, you're going north, and you're on, what's the name of that highway? <laughs> What's the name of that freeway? <laughs> I forget even the name of the freeway now. I forgot the name of streets. I forgot everything. Anyway, you um, just as you're leaving town and you're, you know, it's at what I used to be a wider open area. You come to um, Deer Springs Road, the freeway. Yes, I-15. Okay, so a picture time. All right. So this is the freeway. This is I-15. And here is, do you know where Deer Springs Road is? The off-ramp. And over here is the fire station. 
or here's a fire, I forget, somewhere is a fire station right there. And there's like a nursery right there or something. Okay. So if this is north, all right. So if you get off this off ramp and then there is a, 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 what do you call those roads? Anyway, it's a road that goes along the freeway here. Surface, no, it's not surface road. It's called a sub. Anyway, it's a road there. And I don't know, it's, it's changed names. I forget what the name of that is now. Anyway, so you get off the freeway, you come over here, you go down that road and it's kind of empty. There's not too many houses. And then there's a road that comes up here and then it's just a, like a private road. I think there's like three houses there, maybe three houses here. Maybe I think that's all. And then you come over and there's a road up here that they were starting a de development, but it never happened. So all there is up here is a road up to the hill and all these these um, pads um, ready for building, but there's nothing there. Hi, Aaron. Frontage. Thank you. Frontage row. So, do you know where I'm talking about? <laughs> do you have any idea where I'm talking about? <laughs> anyway, so. So this street right here, this private street, it goes because there's that big hill that's up here somewhere. And then over here is a Vista. You go around here. It used to be a bunch of avocado groves back here and all that kind of stuff. Anyway. Yeah, the country club is somewhere over there. So anyway, um, here on Deer Springs Road, here's Deer Springs Road. And you come over here. And my parents had bought this prop, this, it was um, property. And then they subdivided it into these three different lots. All right. So I bought one of these, I bought this lot. And then my father eventually built a home up here and sold that home and built this home. And he lives in this one. And then he sold the three lots. All right. This was in... Uh, 1990. I don't know what those prices are now, but this was a little over an acre and I got that for 45. I know some of you people in other parts of the country are going to go, what? This is California. So in 1990, I bought that little over an acre for $95,000. Yeah. My parents are still right there for 90 uh, for $45,000. This house that's right here, you may or may not have seen it. It's an, it's kind of like an octagon house with stuff going out here. And it's it was yellow. I think he still, he painted, the new owner painted it and it's yellow. All right. Um, and so um, the, uh, we got a loan to build the house. And the loan was for $95,000 to build the house and the lot 45. All right. Okay. Because of my husband's work and stuff. And at that particular time, real estate was flat. It wasn't doing anything. We were in a recession. Interest rates were double digit. It was insane time. So we sold the house and had to move to, you know, for my husband's work. Well, <laughs> well, the last, uh, the person that bought it the last time, the people that live there now paid over a million dollars for my house. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I could say that I used to live in a million dollar home, but it wasn't a million dollar home when I lived in it. I think he paid like 1.2 million for my house. My husband and I built it. We designed it. Um, we did practically everything in that house. Um, and um, anyway, somebody else has it. <laughs> yeah, Nordahl is around there somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, I wish I could remember the name of this. Is this one called Mesa something? I think this is Mesa Rock Road. I just remembered, unless they changed the name. 
This is Mesa Rock Road. This one right here. And then that private road is off of Mesa Rock Road. I just remembered because that was my address because <laughs> mine was part of the frontage. And then theirs was theirs was up here. That was they have their name was a different street name. But anyway, now that all of you couldn't care less about where I lived. <laughs> anyway, so that yellow house deal, my husband and I built it. And the house behind that house, the next one back there, it's a white house. And it's one, well, no, it's a two-story, but it's kind of long, like a ranch style type. Anyway, that's where my parents live. Now you know everything. <laughs> More than any of you wanted to know. <laughs> Okay, so now, next. These are some others that I have. Um, aren't these kind of cool? But I wanted to go with the other colors that I showed you for the, um, on that background. Ooh, I really like that one. That one's really cool. But anyway, okay, so we've got some of those papers that we're going to add. Oh, that's something else altogether. Oh, and I have a couple of pieces of fabric that I wanted to use for these little hinges. And then I got some of this um, Papers, these, this is like, it's, um, I don't know what kind of, I get this at, at Sam's. It's in between all of the, uh, the canned goods and it feels really cool. I really, I really like it. I like it a lot. Rosemary. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Rosemary, do you know why some albums are heavy and others aren't? Okay, well, some of them are um, a piece of cloth, I mean, um, a piece of really, really thick cardboard, and then it has, um, you know, um, some kind of a, a padding, and then the fabric, and then some of them, instead of the really thick cardboard, it's actually wood, so that might be the difference in weight, and then some of them, instead of the fabric, it has that celluloid, and that really makes them heavy. So um, it could be any one of those three. Margaret Radcliffe. Nope. Not familiar with her. She might have moved in after we left. She might be one of my parents' neighbors. All right, so now I have to figure out on this one if I'm going to uh, attach. Oh, here we go. If this is just going to be attached to this, and then you know the next person can decorate it all and do what they want, or if I should um, collage this and have this, you know, I'll let it be plain. See, I usually leave my stuff plain so that people can make it their own. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Oh, and I have all these. Hey, Donna. And I have these cool things I'm going to put in there. What I'm going to do is, I'm just like I normally do. I just kind of halfway decorate it, and then I include a package of all kinds of fun ephemera that I think would look cool in there. And then people can play and do whatever it is they want to do with it. But I thought these were kind of cool. You can leave them like they are and use them, you know, as journaling cards, or you can cut them up and glue them onto the pages. Oops, those are two of the same. I didn't realize I had two of the same. So anyway, I was heading off to the grocery store, like I mentioned before, 
you know, oh, that thing I hate to do. And um, on the way back home, I saw this sign I had never seen. And it said, Hawaiian food. And I go, Arr! so I got over onto the lane and um, I had to make a, a left turn. And I go in there and I go and it says, you know, Hawaiian something, something poke. And I go, man, I wonder if this is really like for real, right? Because it's been since I left Hawaii. I haven't had real Hawaiian food. But, you know, people say things are food and it, it really isn't. So I thought I was I was already ready to be disappointed. So I go in there and it was a young kid behind. And um, I could tell right away by my question, he didn't know what I was talking about. So I thought, OK, well, you know. Just because he doesn't know what I'm talking about doesn't mean that whoever put the food together, you know, isn't good stuff. So, but it turned out that they didn't have um, like Hawaiian dishes. They had just a, a like a bar full of stuff for poke. If you guys have ever had poke before, it's pretty much all the fixings that go into sushi, but it's already it's kind of chopped up and it's got all the little things that would go into it. And so what they do, which is kind of clever, um, they serve you a bowl. Hold on. I got this for dice here. I had my husband eat. We shared. So this is the sushi rice that goes on the bottom. And then all the poke stuff uh, gets put up on the top, which is different kinds of fishes and all different kinds of stuff that goes up there. And then they have a variety of sauces that they pour over it. And, um, you know pretty cool the flavor was really good um i don't know yeah you know, it wouldn't be something i would buy all the time um but it was very tasty and they have it it's it's um build your own um bowl of poke so it has all the stuff that you can put on there and the base if you don't want rice white rice or sushi rice you can have brown rice or half and half or you can have just lettuce on the bottom like a salad and all the stuff gets poured on there. I think if I get it again, I do it with the lettuce. And then here's all the different kinds of stuff. You can get some ahi and spicy salmon and tuna and shrimp and coconut ginger sauce. A whole bunch of fun stuff. It was fun. It even smelled good when you walked in there. You could tell everything was super, super fresh. You have avocado that you can put on there, and carrots, cucumber, tofu, crab stick, and then they have the wasabi sauce. Mmm, that was good. And ginger sauce and mango sauce. I think I got the three sauces. I couldn't choose, so I got all three. And that's kind of how it looks. All that stuff on top of the the rice or the salad or whatever you want to put on there. It's pretty good. It wasn't cheap though. Well, for around here, thing everything around here is cheap. So it's probably a normal price. I think that bowl with all the stuff in it, it was like $11. Um, and it's takeout, you know, it isn't like you're sitting down or anything, but I guess for all the, the fr it was really fresh. I said it smelled really good in there. So it was very, very fresh. So I guess that's a good price. I know for you, Jill, that was cheap from over there where you are. <laughs> that was cheap. All right. So did we decide what we're going to do about this? Yours. Okay. Jennifer, yours is not fabric. And it's not. Well, what's the cover? Do you know what the cover is? You have to take a picture of it and send it to me to Etsy. Okay. Because I don't know what else the covers could be. We'll see. Yeah, Jill. See, that's why the rice, I have it, right? He didn't eat the rice. He ate, 
to eat the fish and all that stuff. But I mean, uh, I mean, it's it's got to remind you. You may not know what it is, but it's got to remind you of something. You know, I mean, is it toward the cloth side? Is it like leather? Is it wood? Is it plastic? Um, is it fluffy? Is it soft? <laughs> it's it's got to remind you of something. What does it remind you of? Okay, it's hard. Okay. Well, right away, that accounts for the weight because it is hard. Are you sure you don't have a metal one? I have a metal one, but I already sold it. But it's in the box. Is CJ here? It's CJ's now. That thing's gorgeous. Did you guys ever see that? Oh, but it's not heavy. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, I can't remember when the last time was we went out to go eat. If I, if I want something naughty, I just go and grab it um, when I go shopping. <laughs> when I go grocery shopping, I'll grab something naughty and eat it. But I figured this one, you know, the top part was, was um, healthy for him. And then I'll eat the naughty part. Okay, I need some feedback. Should I leave this naked or should I go ahead and put something on top of it before we put the window? It kind of looks kind of cool just like that to somebody else to fix, you know, and fix it up. Or, well, I already glued that stuff on that, so I don't want to use that. I could I could just do something like that, cut that off and just have that cover part of it so that it's not completely naked. That way it's just semi nude. Are all you guys asleep? You're not helping me. That's all we talk about here. All these, all, all the ladies that do crafts, it's either craft or food. That's all we talk about. Craft and food. I guess it's safe. <laughs> all right. So let's, let's do some gluing. Let's just glue. See what happens. Tear and glue. Glue and tear. Let me get this white stuff off of here first. And then maybe after I'm off. I'll sew all the, the rim or something. I'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Now I'm trying to figure out what Jennifer has. Jennifer knows a lot of things, so if she doesn't know what it is, that's a mystery.
Well, our neighbors next door are moving. We never saw them or heard them, but now it's like, uh-oh, who's moving in? The mystery. All right, that would be fun to use. And then... No, I don't think I'll use that. But I might use some of these leftovers. Yeah. There we go. There's a plan. It's coming together. It's coming together. Anyway, after that night that we were trying to find who that lady was that I got the inspiration from, which now I've already forgotten her name. <laughs> Darla found her. Her last name was Moss. I remember the last name was Moss. Was it Marianne Moss? Mary Moss? I think it was Marianne Moss. Anyway. I uh, went to Pinterest and said, okay, well, if she did that one like that, it inspired me to do this. Maybe she did some others. Well, she has a photograph of about, it must be like at least four or five of these vintage uh, photo albums all repurposed into junk journals. It was the coolest sight. I kept looking to see if I could see what they looked like inside. But um, it didn't take me anywhere. It took me to a, um, a website. But it was for her students only. If you had uh, purchased her class, you had to sign in and log in. And then, you know, you could go in and see other people's works and stuff like that. So, ah, rats, I couldn't see the inside. I only saw the outside and her outside is completely different from mine. She made it really like a junk journal. She, you know, took out the spine. The spine is exposed. She's got um, fabric, um, just little strips of fabric covering up the mess of the cover, you know, of the um, album. I mean, she just went totally junk, you know, which is really super cool. Um, mine, I don't think we're, in bad enough condition to do I guess I could have the one I'm doing right now if I hadn't um, redone the the fabric on the front it was in pretty bad shape so I could have just gone kind of really wonky with it and it would looked really cool but I didn't all right so let me get these out the ones that I'm not going to tear up so I'll accidentally tear them up and now I'll be mad at myself that out of the way. Maybe I'll do two at the same time. Nah, nah. too crowded. All right, here's some more scraps. Now let me get some book pages, regular book pages. Okay, I think I have enough junk.
So what's everybody been up to? Do I have any, um, I don't have any moderators here tonight, do I? Uh-oh, that's bad. Hold on. i got to get some moderators here. Do you mind, Jennifer? Let me see. Louise is a trigger finger. There we go. In case we get some. We've been fortunate we haven't got any weirdos tonight, but you never know. Adi Popo, she she usually sees them before everybody. She's not here tonight. So. All right. I have no idea what I'm doing. We're just going to cover it up and go from there. Oh, yeah, you're in your phone. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to collage these to have so there's something, you know, on them. And then I'm going to go look on my jelly plate and prints for my jelly plate. See if any colors kind of, you know, kind of look old fashioned. -y. If not, then I'll come back and tone all these down with something. Um, Sometimes what I do is I copy and tea dye, even avocado dye, after the fact. I just get a little brush and lightly brush over it so it's not like soaking, you know, dripping water. And it's just enough to uh, tone it down. And it doesn't hurt anything at all, so... Might be something you might want to consider. Because you might look at, you know, a page you have and you go, oh, that's a little too bright. I have a little um, area on the front of this little house. It was a porch. It was just about, I think it's about four or five feet deep. And then this little place is only, huh, what is this? I can't remember. I think it's 16 feet wide. So that little area was obviously 16 by 
by five and about two summers ago, I guess it was, we enclosed it and kind of using it just like storage. And so my husband says, you know what? You got so much junk. <laughs> you need a place for all that junk. Um, so <clears throat> the next, after we get done with the rock pile, we're um, going to take all the junk out of there and whatever we're going to toss, we're going to toss. And then we're going to insulate it and then put some shelving out there so that um, it'll be part of my space. I won't feel like I'm outside looking for stuff. Because right now it's not, it serves no purpose, you know, not a real purpose. So that'll be cool. I'm going to put my, um, my heat press out there. That'll give me a lot more room in my other room. Okay, Jennifer, have fun. 12 handmade cards. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how to do that stitch. I do my own. I fake it. It's not real. <laughs> I've had several, several times people say, oh, can you teach me how to do that stitch? No, I don't know how I do it. <laughs> it's not real. I never do it the same twice. Ah, Peggy, they are, are they? We'll see. We'll see. I have a lot of um salvage wood pieces because my big project before I ever got into any of this is we remodeled a uh, our home which was built in 19 I forget now it was 1906 or 1908 and even though we didn't do it a hundred percent you know um, exactly, you know, we just tried to like give the impressions. <laughs> we faked a lot of it, but we did go around to different places and we salvaged a lot of doors and windows and, you know, we found it, we grabbed it. We saw it on the side of the road. We grabbed it. We found it cheap. We grabbed it. So now that it's all finished, you know, we had all these leftovers, which, to me, you know, I just, I just love all that stuff and I don't really want to get rid of it, but it's not practical because we're done. <laughs> we're done. Hey, Mary, she's still here. So I have a lot of, um, well, not so many now, a lot of the windows. I've given some away, like to the ladies that come here to my workshop say do you want a window to play around with yeah so they take a window so I've gotten rid of most of my windows and 
I sold um, the doors we had left over because those we did not come by for free. So we sold those. And those went very quickly. And now I have a lot of <clears throat> turn posts and things like that, smaller things. But still, you know, am I going to use it? So now my husband says, <laughs> my husband goes, um, are you sure you can't use that with one of your journals? And I'm thinking, how am I going to use a turn post to make it? <laughs> He's getting worse than me, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's like, I don't think so. But you never know. Looking kind of sad right now, but don't worry. It's going to look better. It's going to look better soon. Great whoops, I don't want that there. My crazy dog went and chased my little bunny rabbits that hang around here on my little section of the yard. I made a mistake of letting my dog in here. <laughs> he wanted to come and visit me for a minute. So I let him over here and he gets real bored in five minutes. He wants to he, he likes to be outside. So he was bored in five minutes. So I opened the door here, not thinking that you know it was like getting sunset. And my little bunnies were coming out to have dinner. So he chased one. He didn't catch him, but he gave him a good run, let me tell you. And to th tomorrow's supposed to be another pretty sunny day. So I'm excited about that. We'll get a lot done. But then Thursday, it's supposed to rain. So we got to get all our outside stuff done before then. And then this Saturday, no, is it Friday or Saturday? <gasps> I don't remember. Our um, our local library is having a book sale. Oh no! Oh, like I need another book. But it's children's book. All children's books. And so the first day, I think they're a dollar each. 
Second day, they're 50 cents. And then on Sunday, it's a whole big grocery bag. Um, last year, I think it was $1.50 for the whole bag, whatever's left. So, we shall see. And then they have the preview um, to the book sale. And it's so funny. I don't know. My husband's the type. This, this is the kind of husband I have. He chit-chats with everybody. He's a chatty Cathy, I swear. If people just meet me, they think, you know, that I talk a lot. <laughs> then when they, <laughs> and I usually tell them, um, I'm the quiet one in the family. <laughs> My, he's just a chatty Kathy. I just, or a chatty Richard. Anyway, and because he's that way, he can strike up a conversation with anybody about any subject. And so, the ladies, I put in quotation mark, that work in all these various places, they, they start to think, like, for instance, my husband does isn't um, like at the library. You can be like a uh, they have different names for it, but basically you give a donation and they give you some kind of title. And when they have all these different types of sales, you can go in for a preview, right? Well, one day he went to the library, which was preview night, but he just went to go get a, a regular book that he was checking out. And the ladies go, oh, Richard, oh, Richard, how come you haven't come in for preview night? You know, and <laughs> he says, well, because I'm not a donator. You know, I didn't donate. And they go, oh, that doesn't matter. Come on in. You know, anyway, that's just one example. Everybody lets him in everywhere where he's not supposed to be about almost all subjects. So last year he got to go in for the preview. <laughs> so. He'll probably go in on Thursday now, the rain day. He'll go in for the preview. He'll just casually walk in and ladies will go, oh, Rosemary, I mean, Richard, aren't you coming in for the preview? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the sad part about that, those libraries, is um, they throw them away. They throw them off in the dumpster if they don't sell. I remember one year, this was like three years ago, um... See, the last day of the sale is, is Sunday. And then my husband went in there on a Monday for something. Again, get a book, take a book. I don't remember what it was. And um, they had a bunch of books on one of those, you know, rolling carts. And they literally went up to my husband. They said, Richard. Are any books in here that would interest you? She says, if not, they're going in the dumpster. Well, he almost had a heart attack. There must have been like 15 boxes of books. Well, guess what he came home with? <laughs> 15 boxes of books. They just gave to him. And he went through them and saw which ones I might like and which ones he might want to read. And, and then there was a... It just happened that some of the books in there had to do, just a few, had to do with boxing. And there was this place that just opened down the street for young kids 
um, to box. And so Richard put those all together and created like a little library for them. And well, at first he asked the guy that runs the place, you know, would he be open to them? They go, oh yeah, we would love, we don't have any books on the subject. And uh, some of them were, you know, about old fighters and history and really cool pictures. And then other ones is more practical, you know. But anyway, so he put together a little library for them and donated all that to them. Oh, they just thought he was fantastic, you know. And all my husband was doing was saving them from the dumpster. How sad is that? All right. All right. So that side's done. Just with that. I might or might not come back with some stamping or something. That's kind of cool. Yeah, book intervention. That's exactly what he did. So now every year they ask him, you know, so he'll look through them. I mean, we don't have any room for books. I'm, I swear we don't have no room. So he'll look through them. Because my husband, he's not the type that reads novels. Everything he likes to read is like historical or, you know, um, it's all nonfiction that he likes. He's more like a research person. That's why he can chitter chatter about any subject anybody brings up. And through osmosis, that's how I get a lot of my information. <laughs> I can just start a conversation. He'll say, you know, I just read. I go, oh, Lordy, Lord, here we go. But at least I can say it's never boring. And then you can bring up a subject and go, well, you know, statistically, I go, oh, no, here we go. Hey, Miss Jessica, you're my inspiration. I couldn't do it without your inspiration. She's a collage queen. My pieces are a little bigger than yours because I'm lazy, but... weather over there Jess I haven't been watching the news good thing you weren't on the other day with me I had people on with me because I was they were they were living through a tornado uh, watch with me we had thunder and lightning going on and I was stuck over here in the studio because I didn't even know it was coming and next thing I know I see heard banging on my window and I thought I thought there was some kind of an animal out there, you know, rustling around or something. I go to open the door, and this wind's going <laughs> like flat line. I go, whoa, wait a minute. Because it's just like it was, I just looked out there a few minutes before, and there was nothing. I mean, it wasn't raining or doing anything. So I turned the news on, and, yeah, we were on a watch. It's like, okay. So it started raining so hard that um, there was no way I, was, I could get back home. Because I would be like totally drenched. Plus the, the thunder was, I mean, the lightning was so much. I was like, oh, all I need to do is get soaking wet and get get electrocuted. So I said, okay, I guess I'll play. And I'll go online and see who's awake. I think it was like 1 o'clock in the morning or something. I don't know. 
and um, and we they held my hand while I while I did my art. But the uh, Texas people, it was worse off. The tornado landed down there. We had one hit um, the northern part of the state, but we just got a lot of wind and rain and all that kind of good stuff. So not so bad. Yeah, I think so, Jessica. Probably the same time of the year, too. <sighs> So then I had the I had a TV on and I saw okay well we're just getting the tail end of the back end of the first storm. So as soon as it passed, I said, okay, ladies, I gotta go. I think it was like three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I gotta go before the next the next band of rain comes, or I'll never get out of here. <laughs> And what was so funny, because it had been warm that day. That's why we had the thunder and lightning, because the a cold front came in. So anyway, so, so my husband was in bed. <laughs> and two of my dogs are deadly afraid of thunder and lightning. Well, my husband didn't even know we had a storm. He had uh, one of the windows in the bedroom and one of the windows in the bathroom open because like I said when he went to bed it was warm and you can imagine the wind was going this way which means the rain was going that way oh my goodness I got there fortunately um, most of it there's a tree in front of the window where a big bush I should say uh, of our bedroom so the rain didn't like go straight in because it hit the bush but in the bathroom, there's nothing there, and it came in. But fortunately, it's all a tile floor, so it was just a matter of mopping it up. But um, I can only imagine the poor little dog. <laughs> oh my goodness! Because when I came home, he was un he was under the bed. The dog, not my husband. <laughs> poor guy. So then in the morning, I go, Richard. <laughs> Yes. Um, did you know there was a uh, storm last night? <laughs> he did not hear a word. He goes, I thought I heard a little something. I said, a little something. Oh, sound like a train was going through here. A little something. And then it was so funny because the worst of the storm was north of me. And that's where um, Shannon and Vicki and all them live. And um, so in the morning, I I messaged them. I said, oh, are you guys okay? And what about the damage? Because on the news, you know, quite a few trees came down in that up there in that area and power was out and all this stuff and they all said oh we slept right through it and i'm going oh my god <laughs> oh they slept right through i guess that's the way to go through a storm just go to bed go to sleep you won't know nothing nothing bad happens you don't know something bad happens you don't know <laughs> either way <laughs> either way you're doing good Oh, thank you, Janet. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm having fun doing it. Jessica, I'm altering. Hey, you do, you don't do anything with those pretty big, pretty albums. I don't know if you ever find any. So I've never seen you have any. I'm going to show you some old beat up ones and see if you go in the hunt for me cheap cheap i can only afford cheap because i tear them apart they got to be in bad shape but you might come across some that's what i'm doing right now i'm altering these are pages that are going into one of those altered books let's see
Um, here's my other papers. I thought I had some other types. Did I use them all? I don't think so. Maybe I did. Oh my goodness, Peggy. That happened. They were showing on the news. It happened to a family. Fortunately, nothing happened to them, but the whole house. I mean, the way it landed, um, you know, there was plenty of room underneath. You know, it didn't land physically. It didn't land on them. But the house is basically a, to a total loss. <clears throat> And we've got some big trees. We've got a big, giant uh, pecan tree. And a couple of years ago, we we had to have someone come in and top it off because it was getting so tall and so big. And that was like maybe four years ago. It's just as tall and big now. <laughs> so my husband's been saying, oh, we might have to get someone in here again. Cause it's so tall they have to come in with a you know with a a lift a crane whatever you call that Oh, no, Mary. <laughs> I didn't know you were so easily influenced. Oh, Aww. Aww. Well, see, Mary can have vivid dreams because... She's an artist. She sees things in a way we don't see stuff. I think. I'm guessing that's why. <laughs> Man, you had one sassy kitty. My dog just goes under the bed. And that's the end of that. <laughs> he doesn't cry or do anything. He just feels safe down there. And he goes to sleep. But it's funny. Because his adrenaline's going, he can slip underneath. But then after the storm is gone, he can't get back out. He's too big. <laughs> So we have to lift up the bed, and then my husband has to drag the dog out. It's so funny. Oh, yes, Jessica. Yes, yes. You never did see the one I made, did you? I made a pretty cool one the other, not the other day. It's been several months, but um, it came out cool. I sold it, but it was fun to make. And it was just the backs and the fronts. And then I did that weird binding that people ask me what it is. <laughs> it's just fake. I don't, I don't know what it's called. I don't know what it's called. It's just fake. Fake, fake. All right. I need some more color. Where's my other? Oh, there's the other ones. Oh, they're underneath. No wonder. No wonder. Yeah. 
Now we're talking. We need a little variety. Yes, I did. Those things are adorable. Oh, man, are they at the house or are they here? Oh, I think they're at the house. Hold on. Oh, where are you? No, I think they're house. Shoot. I was going to show them they're so adorable. Yeah, they're going to have to. Oh, yeah. Rats. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're, yeah, they're next door. So I was showing them to my husband. Let me see here. Yep. Over here. I guess I didn't. No. No, they're next door. They were adorable. <laughs> They were, they're so cute. I mean, I just started giggling. And my husband goes, what are you laughing at? And I said, come over here and look at this. <laughs> this is too cute. Jessica, you need to host me to um, to do a sale. I'm too chicken to do it by myself. Speaking of chickens. more flexible than you are because I know you got you got stuff you got to get out when you got to get it out but I was telling the ladies you tell me what you think about this I don't know about you but sometimes you go to a sale and let's just say um, the only thing you're interested in are doilies right you're waiting for somebody to bring out their doilies because they said they were going to bring them out and you wait like two and a half hours and then the person says, oh, I'm tired. I'm not going to bring out the doilies. <laughs> you just wasted, you know, <laughs> three hours waiting for the doilies. So I was thinking to make it short, um, I would do one with just one thing. You know, like, okay, whoever likes doilies on Thursday, all I'm doing is doilies. Show up if you like doilies. Don't show up if you don't like doilies. You know, that kind of a thing. And just kind of keep it short and sweet. And then do another day where you're just going to do, you know, quilt, quilt pieces or whatever. But then I was kind of talking myself out of it because then I thought, wait a minute. You know, most of us are impulsive and we just buy stuff we don't want. 
So if they know you're only doing one thing and they say they're not interested, then they don't come when if they were sitting there waiting for three hours, they might impulsively buy something. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'm not Madison Avenue. I don't know how this works. But it was just a thought. I don't know if that undermines the sale aspect of it because we all are so, you know, oh, I like that. Click, you know. Yeah, see. Ah, Mary, I like how you think. See, that's why I did say things out loud. Because <laughs> people have thoughts on the subject. See, Donna says she'd love a doily day. I bought, um, I've got a bunch of quilt tops that I've already cut up, set aside the ones that I want to use for journals and stuff. But, you know, I want to sell the rest of them. So that could be another day, you know, just quilt tops. For those that like that. They wouldn't have to waste your time unless that's what they wanted. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, Kathy. Kathy finds the good stuff. You would buy a pile of my printed scraps. Oh, oh, print is really. Ha! Mm -hmm. I've never done. Are you talking about digitals? I've never done digitals. that's what you're talking about let's see right Jessica because I had I, I thought okay I thought at least of stuff that I personally have I have books um, let's see I have the books I have fabric I have doily and I'm, I'm getting a new kit together. I should, I, I shouldn't even call it a kit, but I was talking to the ladies. I've been talking about this for a little while cause I'm still gathering things, to, but I was telling them that I'm uh, personally don't nobody get out of shape now. I'm personally just tired of certain phrases that are always used to describe things that are being sold. And it's just kind of overused and I'm just, tired of it so um one to one of the many overused um, um descriptions is vintage and boho and all this stuff so for the longest time i've been trying to come up with a look or a name for a look of the stuff i like there's a there's a certain things i like i know i gravitate toward those things and when people send me happy mail it's always that stuff. So they already know my style probably better than I do because I never get anything. 
you know, sometimes you get something, you go, oh, that's nice. I appreciate it. But in your mind, you're thinking, I'm never going to use that. What am I going to do with that? But that rarely happens to me. Um, people pretty much know what I like. And um, so anyway, so I came up, hold on. I came up, I realized all the stuff that I like. And they basically come from um, the northern part of Africa and the southern part of Asia. And so I was looking at all those different things that I like. And then I started thinking about the the Silk Road um, where all of that, um, you know, the trade and the merchandise and the Marco Polo and all that kind of stuff and everything. And so I said, okay, for, for my kits that I'm going to do that show all those types of things that I like, uh, I'm just going to call it the Silk Road Collection. And so I made up these little, um, these little thingamajiggers that I'm going to put. And so it shows like the caravan with the elephants and the camels and the Asians and all of that stuff that where those two continents come together. That was part of the Silk Road um, trade route. So that's what I'm going to call it. And I'm not going to be messing with any of the other, other, other stuff. And, oh, I like that name, too. Well, I already got this. <laughs> I'll put that on there somewhere. <laughs> I should have asked you. Look at the name she's coming up with. And that's true. It is the Mongolian look and arabesque and all that stuff. Yes, all that stuff. So anyway, so I have a bunch of stuff that I'm going to be using for that. I've got, you know, I've got uh, my cantha quilts. I've got my um, Indian stuff. I have my African fabric. I've got my handmade rusted stuff. I've got some stuff, um, beads, little trinket things from Pakistan. I've got um, these yokes that I got from, I forget where they're from, Nepal or something. So that's all going to be my little collection. And so I figure one night... You know, then the only thing I would put up was part of my my Silk Road um, collection. So those are like the things floating around in my head. If it all comes to fruition, well, that's a whole other story. But if nothing else, I've got my little my little finger jiggers left here. They're done. They're designed. Okay, I got I distracted myself. Okay, you're in for the rest, huh? Yeah, I've got some some pretty cute um, little. Oh, and I have bark cloth. I know you ladies are into the bark cloth, um, but that's not cheap. That's not going to be cheap night. That's going to be expensive night. So I've already taken the parts that I want, the pieces, parts that I want, and I got the parts that I'm going to sell. I love those yokes I got. They're just so beautiful. <laughs> oh, oh, I think I missed a lot of stuff here. <laughs> should scan some stuff I'm going back now I was too busy chit chatting I wasn't reading oh Jill's gone I'm, a I'm answering Jill and Jill's gone I do like that Aaron Very cool. All right. So next for some more stuff. Where's Hey, 
Hey, there's a bird. There's a bird it's playing. Oops. I got to talk to one of my ladies, Sarah. She lives around here. She comes over and we play here in the studio. She just got herself a bunch of um, wood block stamps. So she's going to bring them over and we're going to be doing some fabric. I have some, but she's got some I don't have, and vice versa. So we're going to play together. I got to contact her. It's going to be raining here Thursday, so I won't be able to do anything outside. So maybe she'll come, come Thursday and we can and we can play. Um Got the green, got that, got all the colors. What am I going to put there now? Ah, this one, there we go. I will do that. Anything you want to know international, just ask Erin. She's she's been everywhere. She's very um what do, what's the word you would use? Eclectic isn't the right word. That's not the right word. Doesn't that look like the top part of Texas? <laughs> yes, yes, she is. Very. Um, what do you mean? You couldn't get there? What happened, Jessica? Hey, Darla. We've been here forever in a day. You didn't even get to um Darla, name that name that state. Or did you already hear me? <laughs> oh, parking. Oh, okay. Oh wow. Yes, she's an eclectic cosmopolitan. <laughs> she's been and done all the things I just dream of doing. And now she raises chickens. That's what happens when you've done it all and there's nothing else to do. You sit back and you say, what should I do? And then you say, oh, live out in the boonies and raise chickens. <laughs> I love it. What a life. All right, I think something that's a little too, that's a little too, um, <laughs> oh, well, it looked like the top part of Texas. It's okay. You can't know everything, Darla. I can't believe you're bad at geography, though. I think you just made that up.
Jennifer, I thought you left. She's sneaky. Oh, no, that wasn't Jennifer. Oh, yeah, you did leave. You came back, I guess. That's Jill that took off. I'm getting my J's confused. All right. Let's see what else you want to put on there. <clears throat> you know there's never enough. Yeah, we, we are making decisions on backgrounds, and everybody got to pick their A, B, and C, and D. So you didn't get to vote, Darla. I'm sorry. I'll show you what we voted on in a second. You might, you may or may not agree with the, with the final choice. But you're going to have to live with our decision that we made. I don't know what's with YouTube. I don't get a lot of notifications, too. They just, they don't tell me. And then when they do tell me, it's like 20 minutes later. <laughs> oh, I'm going to use that. I need to keep that out. I think so, Arlene. I'll just keep going until I get completely pooped. Or if everybody's gone, then I don't want to be just talking to myself. <laughs> Let me get all this stuff out of the way so I don't clean so I don't start gluing things I don't want glued oh oh and I have these okay see that's what I was looking for when I was gluing the different colored ones I went and made the mistake of separating all the you know beigey tones from the others and that's why everything looks the same oh well okay and I may or may not use that. And then this is the fabric. I'm going to make the little hinges. I have it. We'll decide together which ones we're going to use for that in a second. And then these are the inside stuff that I may or may not use. Get that organized. Put that there. Okay. Ah. Bug. Bug. So I put that. Look at clothing in a different way. Look how pretty this is. And honestly now, I can't even remember what the piece of clothing was. <laughs> but it had several layers. I mean, it was about maybe that big. I think it's the bottom of a skirt or something. And so then I just cut strips of three of those, had rows of this stuff. I just think it's so pretty. And it looks like I bought lace and it's just the bottom of a skirt. All right. So that's out of the way. I'm still going to end up doing something to these. I just don't know yet. But I'm getting bored doing that. So I have to move on and then think about that for a while. You know, I get bored very fast. All right. So and I got these to play with. Just let me clean up this mess. And we're going to play with those. Where'd the other ones end up? Uh-oh. I lost the other ones. Peekaboo, where are you? Oh, they're over here. Okay. Found that. All right. It's okay, people. I always talk to myself. There's nobody here to answer me. All 
All righty. Okay. Boys and girls, for those of you that started off with us, the first night, this was the fabric we chose together. If you remember, if you were here, I forget if it was A, B, C, or D, but this is what you guys chose. And then we chose which, which section of that fabric. So we did the leaf here in the front. I reinforced the spine. And it looks pretty cool. I like how it looks. So once I got this all glued in, it became very um, lumpy, shall we say. So um, I decided to take one of the uh, pages from the original album and put in one of the cabinet cards. So once it's all done, I, that's how I'm going to finish this front cover is by gluing this down onto the front cover. So that's what's happening to that one. And then... I just, you know, got different papers so far that's going to be going into the first signature. Got those kind of ready. And then it was suggested that I put one of my um, um, soldered thingamajiggers. I don't know which column. Anyway, put one of my soldered pieces in the journal somehow. So what I did is I just took one of the ones and tore everything out of the window Oh, I mean, created a window and then um, just drilled a hole down here and tied some fibers to that and then put some of that um, fabric that I showed you a few seconds ago, tied it through here and then just tied it up on the top. And so that'll be that page. And then we voted on what page, what color of uh, paper was going to go behind there. So that's going to, I'm going to create a page somehow with some other paper. And then that'll, that'll be the background to that. And then just some more papers for the other signature. And then one more page from the album. And I got two cabinet cards and just put them on here. Use the same twine. Just put a, not twine, um, fibers. Uh, just put a hole in here on the top and the bottom and a hole uh, in the cabinet card and then just tied that in there. So that'll be the other page. And this is will be the background page for that just because I like it like that. And then some more pages for that signature. So what we were working on... Those of you that just got here, um, I had a few pieces that I wanted to incorporate uh, different kinds of papers. And if it gets too bulky, I'll just take out some other stuff. But I do want to incorporate these into the signatures. And then these I created. So, oops, I got this stuff to incorporate somehow. I have too much stuff. I, I, this is what I do. I end up with too much stuff. but That's okay. Um, and then I, uh, this was one full page that I, that I cut up. These were, was a page like that. And so I cut that up. So now I have, um, I think these will end up just being like journaling cards somehow. I'll figure out how I'm going to keep them in and how I'll place them. So that's how that is. And then this is, um, I'm going to put, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we'll get some of the uh, upholstery samples. And I'm going to create a hinge for this to open. And well, now that all this is so busy, you don't even see that. But that was going to, maybe it's going <laughs> to busy one I don't know but anyway that's kind of sort of where we're going right now or maybe I'll put it on the wallpaper I don't know 
that I don't know yet. But uh, but those are the things we've gotten done so far. We got quite a bit done. I would say. Oh, let me see what people are saying now. Um, yeah, I love that tape too. Those are originals, Mary. All right, so that's where we are. And so if I'm going to put, okay, now this for sure, this stays on the outside because it's going to be for that picture. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this little flimsy thing. I don't count that. Okay, so I have nine, nine pages. Now, if we put that there, let's see. If it gets too chunky. We will know right away. <clears throat> and that's probably going to go there. So I don't want the chunky one on there. We'll put it on here. There we go. All right, so I guess I'll do the hinges now. I guess that would be the next logical thing. So here's the fabrics. Now I'm thinking what goes with the front. So we'll go that way. The halfway goes with the theme. Maybe between those. We'll choose to, yeah. We'll go between those. Oh, yeah, I forget how late it is where you are, Louise. Thank you for joining us. We're just going to pick some hinges. I got to figure out where they're going to go, though, because originally I thought I was going to put them on here, but now it's so busy. I don't even want to put them there now. <laughs> it's going to have to be choice number two, I guess. Unless I put them over here. I don't know. I think I confused myself. Or don't use that at all, maybe. 
I don't know. I had a plan. And now, I already have writing on them, though. They've got to go in that direction. Well, they don't have to, but the writing dictates that they go that way. Maybe they just need to go in the back once I put the... Once I put whatever I'm going to put there, maybe these can go here. What do you think? I just lost one. Where'd it go? <laughs> I just lost it. But it would fit there because, I mean, that's where they came from, the album. You know, I just lost it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How can I lose that sitting here? That's pretty bad. Oh, here it is. I put it over here on my computer. All right. So, okay, they could go there. But I don't think I like that. I might have to get some of my, some of my root beer. Yeah, the craft to cry. Okay, so I'm 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 drawing a blank. I don't know what to do with those. I don't want to look at them all night. And, you know, sometimes you end up realizing it just doesn't go the way you planned and you save them for another journal. They don't, they, nothing says it has to be in this journal. <clears throat> it was a thought. And I still may put it back there, but <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I'll still use these for sure as just as a... Um, like a tag. Now, I like this lady. I don't know why. I think somehow she needs to be in the back. Just because. Now, I don't know if I'm going to put fabric. Okay, so the material. Okay, this is what was going on. This is what was going on, Jess. These have hinges, right? So, in theory, I was going to put something down behind it. Put this like here. Then I was going to put a piece of fabric here to create the hinge to open it. Well, now I can't figure out where I want these. So now I don't even know if I'm going to use them in this one. If I don't use them, then I don't need the fabric. But, for the back panel, I'm not sure if I'm going to put paper or put fabric. And it's almost kind of dictates to me that I have to put something kind of thick because this is all bulky from gluing down this really thick um, fabric. So I probably have to get a piece of cardboard, you know, that's really, really sturdy like this and glue that down just so that it's sturdy because it's going to, it'll be warped if I just put fabric and, um, and just, you know, plain old paper. It won't work. It, it'll look ugly. Let's put it that way. It won't look finished. It'll look like, what did she do? So, so, 
I have to figure out what's next. What am I doing next? So if I don't know I'm doing the hinge, then I don't need to figure out which fabric because I'm not even sure if I'm doing that anymore. And this is going here. And I need to extend that paper. I need to make it bigger. I can do that. I can glue something to there to make that look bigger. So it'll fit. And maybe what I need to do is maybe do something like that. I think I need another one on, on the back of that. I'm going to have that double one. That's, that's something I could do. That I could do. I'm going to double this up with another one of those papers that I have. Maybe that one. So we don't just have white. Let me glue those together. Good night, Mags. Yuck. Hey, Laura. Yeah, Kat, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. I wanted to do something different, but uh, I don't know. I don't like repeating if I don't have to, but I may have to. Maybe if I eat my sushi rice, it will, it'll give me a flash. <laughs> oh, you think the hinges should just go on some marble paper? Well, maybe. But I, but I. Okay, now I want to extend that. That's going to go. Like that. She looks cute there. I like that. Okay. That'll work. Oops. Wrong. Kathy, that's a naughty word to me. I 
I don't do continuity. <laughs> I'm the contrast girl. Too much continuity makes me nervous. <laughs> you could sew that, that panel on. What does that mean? What does that mean, Peggy? Sew the back panel on. Good night, Darla. Don't work too hard. I mean, tomorrow. Right, Kathy. No continuity. You see my place. <laughs> Do you see any continuity? All right. Okay. So I'm happy with that because then that's going to go like that. And then you get to see that pretty. And then this is the back. And you have plenty of room to do whatever it is you do do. Okay. I'm okay with this signature. I think that signature's pretty much done for right now unless I do some little embellishments afterwards. But the basic of it is done. And I think... This one, I think I'm going to put some gesso on that. So I think this one is um, the basics of it. I think this one is done. I also want to put something on here, which I think I do.
You notice I don't measure either. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's just put some pieces. Let's put some pieces. We got plenty of pieces. That's right, Brenda. You don't need no stinking rulers. What movie is that from? Nope, Darla's not here. Oops. Quick. What movie is that from? Darla can't be here to bail you guys out. Yay, Brendan is placing the saddles. Carla. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. We know, Carla, we're just trying to be funny. Don't get all serious on us now. Alrighty.
All right. So in general, until I figure out what kind of foo-foo stuff I'll put in there, in addition to the regular pages, this signature is done. Time for the little time for the little kid to go to bed. All right, so that one's done. Oh, let me see what I'm missing out on. Look, it sounds like Jessica got something in the mail. Maybe I need to put something right there. Hey, Linda. Laura, somebody was reading that the other day. Who was that? On their live. Or am I making up stuff now? Okay, now that doesn't look so naked. We have Holland in the morning in the house. Yay, Maria. Maybe we'll wake up now. <laughs> we need to wake up. All right. So I'm thinking that these signatures are done for now. So the only thing I need to figure out is once and for all, what am I going to do with these? Hmm. I've got to think about this one.
Yeah, Maria, do I end up using these tomorrow or not? <laughs> oh, maybe, no. Maybe I should talk to somebody down in Australia. It's already the next, next day, I think, right? <laughs> I just don't know what to do. I had a plan, but the plan's not. The way the plan was in my head is not coming out on the project. So that's my dilemma. I could, yeah, Peggy, that's what I had thought for these because they're just going to be basically like a, like a tag. So I'm going to put a pocket for those, but I was so determined to have these move and be on a hinge. So that's where I kind of got myself in a trick bag because I'm not allowing myself to think outside of doing that. Because I so want it to happen. But it may not. So. I don't know. I might have to sleep on that one. Accordion. Do them. Oh. Yeah. But then I still don't have the flip. You guys, I'm being stubborn about the flip. I haven't quite let that go yet. I mean, I might have to eventually, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm being stubborn. <laughs> yeah, Mary, I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I might look at it differently in the morning and say, you know what? That darn Mary, she was right. Hmm. I don't know. Nothing that a little sushi rice can't help. <laughs> Do you have a sturdy? Well, that's why we were, excuse me, I'm chewing. That's why we were doing this stupid, um, <laughs> these glue pages, because this was really sturdy um, cardboard. And so it would be sturdy enough. But then once I did all that stuff on it, when you go like that, the thing that was going to be exposed, um, it just got lost. Unless when I just sew the inside here, then I do that on the inside of this because that's sturdy enough. This is real sturdy. So I don't know. I think I sort of, I don't know if I overthink it or underthunk it, but I didn't think it right. But I think some sushi rice will help. <laughs> Flip inside the other. What? You guys just get too crazy on me now. I might just have to save these completely and just make some little mini books out of them because now I'm seeing them as a mini book. You guys started talking about mini books and now that's all I can see here is a mini book. Two mini books, maybe four mini books. No, I see this is the front. I match the back. I'm in the pages in there. Darn it, that's all I can see now. Curse. Curses. <laughs> yeah, I think they need to be on their own. 
and be special, which means it's probably gonna have to be a little mini book. I would think sometimes a decision is just made for you. And, and you know, your first ideas are not the best, always the best ideas, you know? Even if you're being stubborn about it, like me. <laughs> that would be too heavy, Mary, on this kind of stuff. It's a cute idea, but these are heavy enough just by itself on these pages. I think they're going to have to be a standalone. I think. I don't know about you guys, but wasabi is, I love wasabi. Do you guys like wasabi? <laughs> I love wasabi. Hmm. Hey, Mary, I could do get a spine journal. That's kind of sort of what you're saying. One on each side kind of overlapping, but a little different. I get a big piece of cardboard. Oh, that's upside down. Yeah, I got to think about this. Either way, I think it's not going to be attached to this book. It's going to be on its own, I'm pretty sure. And she needs to be part of the book. I like her. Oh, look how cool she looks in there. Look. She's who I wanted in the book. Maybe she needs to be in my mini book. Oh, you're still working on the envelopes. <laughs> look how pretty she looks in there. See how things come together sometimes? Okay, so I think I'm done. <laughs> Except for eating my rice. Because <laughs> then I got to figure out what I'm doing with the, um, what kind of spine I'm putting. I mean, it's going to be a hidden spine, but. I got to figure out if I'm just going to use the cardboard or cardboard and fabric or what I'm going to do. So I have to think on that and do that tomorrow or whenever. I might be too busy moving the rocks tomorrow. Just thinking about it, I'm getting tired. Because tomorrow's Wednesday, right? And we got to get done as much as we can because it's going to rain again Thursday. And then the ground gets all, whoo. A mess. Thank you, Mary. Restaurant wasabi. Well, I don't know. No, not the restaurant, just wasabi itself. Well, Peggy, my metal's on the outside all the time. I'll never bring it in. You should see what it looks like. The animals want to get close to my stuff. And I have a... 
I have a cookie sheet that I put my thinner stuff in and it's always got water in there. I think that cookie sheets are probably so rusted. If I pick it up, everything will fall out of it. <laughs> it's a lot hotter than horseradish, but yeah, it's, it's, if you get the pure stuff, that stuff, it'll clear. I mean, all you have to do <clears throat> literally is get some on your finger, put it in your mouth. Don't even touch your mouth, put it in your mouth and breathe in and your whole sinuses open up. <laughs> if you have allergies or clogged up sinuses, get yourself a tube of wasabi. <laughs> I don't know which is hotter, wasabi or sriracha. I think the, the wasabi is. I really do. Oh, it was so sad. One time, this is probably like 10 years ago, I went to one, uh, some Asian restaurant. I can't remember what it was. And went with some friends. And they had never even seen or tasted wasabi. Well, that poor woman thought that it was uh, guacamole. And you know what happened next. Oh, my goodness. If she was a cartoon, fire had been coming out of her ears, her nose, her mouth. Any opening in her body, fire would have been coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. I felt so sorry for her because I knew what pain she was in. <laughs> Oh, I love pepper jelly. Jalapeno jelly, is that what you're talking about? I like that. I love jalapeno jelly. Mm hmm Well, all I could do today was I just felt so homesick because when I passed by that restaurant and it said Hawaiian food, and then, you know, I got my polka stuff, gave uh, most of it to my husband. I just got the rice. But um, but all I could think about was the food, their food. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful of that stuff, Brenda. Not everybody can handle it. Habanero pecan, what are you talking about? <laughs> Stare <lip. laughs> Yeah, it's late. It must be late. It's funny when you watch the the evening news, you swear the only people that watch the evening news are 90 years old people because of all the commercials they have for all the medication. <laughs> oh, I've never had that. Do you make it or do you buy it? That habanero stuff is, that's pretty hot. That's pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, it's hot. It's a different kind of hot. You know, because there's some hot that, that, that affect different parts of your tongue. And that stuff that hits the back of your tongue, that makes me like, I can barely catch my breath. That wasabi, it just burns your whole mouth up. That habanero takes my breath away. Well, I remember when my grandmother, now see, you're, you're reminding me of things I need to write down for my journal. 
my grandmother, she used to get the um, different types of chilies, the California chili, the Anaheim chili, and I forgot what the other chili was. It was a, a big, long one. And she would put that on what they call a gomal, which is basically what, like a, um, a what, a cast iron griddle like. Same thing she would make her tortillas on. Well, anyway, she would she would heat that up and put those chilies on there because she would roast them on top of that as opposed to putting them in the oven to roast them because you have to roast them before you make um, different types of, of chilies. Well, anyway, so she would roast it, and when that thing heated up, you couldn't breathe. It just filled the kitchen, and it would choke you when you heat up those chilies. It's like, it's bad. <laughs> I'd have to walk out of the whole house. Forget about the kitchen. I couldn't be in the living room. I couldn't be anywhere. I had to be outside. I like black pepper. I mean, it's not my favorite thing, but I like it. But do you like vinegar, Peggy? Yeah, we're still here. Now we're just talking about food. <laughs> I'm eating my leftover stuff from when I bought my husband. He can't eat the rice, so I'm eating the rice. We're all winding down talking about hot food. Wasabi, habanero. Sriracha, whatever. Ooh. Oh, that must be horrible. I don't know what that is, Jessica. Oh, well, then I really don't know why you don't like pickles, Peggy. If you drink vinegar, <laughs> if you drink vinegar and you like dill, okay. Ooh, pickles of tea. I don't think I've ever had that. So, Peggy, does that help your cholesterol? I've heard that helps it a lot. Wow, Samantha. Good for you. I need to go on your diet, Samantha, as I'm eating rice. I'm eating the rice. Yeah, I should do that too. <laughs> well, my husband stopped. He stopped. See, I don't know what's going on with my husband. And they they tested him and everything. He hasn't lost any weight. But he has eliminated uh, practically everything known to man. <laughs> and um, his... Um, A1C dropped down to, to 5.4. He just got his test a uh, day before yesterday. And um, without any medication, he's keeping his um, sugar levels below um, 110 with no medication, just through his diet. And um, yeah, that's what I hear. The keto, yeah. His doctor was telling him that the um, the Mediterranean diet is really is also very good. 
but he says you have to be careful because some people add stuff to it and then you know that's when everything starts adding up but um but he says that you can have the doctor said you can have a pint pint which is smaller a quarter of pint a pint smaller right no you can have up to a pint of olive oil a week <laughs> i don't know what you're going to put it on but he says if you cook everything in it like if you have chicken or you have vegetables if you just put them in a roasting pan throw everything in an oven with olive oil all over it um and whatever you know gets soaked in you know eat that um that that really like it just like cleans out everything in your body so monk monk fruit sweetener uh oh Hmm. I'll have to look that up. And what do you put it in, Jessica? Just anything that you would um use sugar for? Oh, I have to find it from a hubby. Because he doesn't use any sugar, but he likes, he would like a little sweetener in his coffee. Well, how did I miss that? Now, how did Mr. Morris miss that? He's the guy that knows a little bit about everything. <laughs> I got one for him now. Oh, that's no fun, Brenda. Any affinity I had for black pepper, you just kind of like blew that apart. Oh, so that um, monk fruit sugar substitute, does that come in, um, is it liquid form or powder form or crystals or what is it? So I can look for it. Both, okay. Because the doctor said that his, um, the diet, was I forget it was the doctor or the dietitian said that, um, that when it comes to even, even, um, even sugar substitutes that, when you eat anything that's sweet or even tastes sweet, doesn't have to have the sugars or the carbohydrates, that your brain registers it as something sweet and then your body starts reacting as if you had eaten sweets. So it's sort of like a brain thing as opposed to, um, you know, a chemical reaction in your body. So he, he, they're basically saying, you know, you have to be careful about that, too, because even though you may not be getting the calories, it won't affect your weight. I mean, it'll help. You're not eating the calories, so that'll help your weight. But as far as like if you're diabetic and things like that and what your body does to the sugar that your body, it, it affects it the same way. So, you know, just in case you guys are watching your numbers for your sugar and keep that in mind oh no now we got another one cactus syrup
agave. There you go. That's a cactus. Uh oh. Peggy says it's not healthy. I don't know why. Where do you go, Laura? Just throw a little tequila and anything you want sweet, and there you go. My grandfather lived to be 90, 96. I never saw a beer in his hand. I never saw a cigarette in his finger. You know, never, ever, ever. But what he did do every night, it was a ritual. He would heat up the leftover coffee. He did this at night, right before they went to bed. I don't know how... You know, it didn't affect their sleep. But, you know, him, they make a big pot of coffee in the morning. And we drink, like, two cups in the morning. Then they'd have one, like, during supper. And then there was one left over at night. And I grabbed And then he had the old-fashioned Pyrex percolator thing that would sit on the stove. All right. She'd go in there and turn it on. And I would hear it boiling. You know, she'd be in another room. And i go, uh... I go over there and turn that off. So you already knew it was kind of almost like syrup, right? Ha! Ah. And um, and they'd have it right before they went to bed. And then my grandfather had this big old thing of whiskey, which was Jim Beam. And there was another one, and I can't remember the name of the other one. But his favorite was Jim Beam. And he had it underneath the sink. And every night before he went to bed, he'd get the Jim Beam. He'd get down, you know, squat down. And open it up, and he'd take one big giant swig out of it, you know, like a, a mouthful. And put the lid back on and put it back down, finish his coffee, and go to bed. He did that every single night that I ever knew him. And he lived to be 90 some, 96, something like that, years old. He was never really sick. He had some back problems from an accident that he had when he was like 15 but other than that he really didn't have hard, nothing wrong with him until you know he just got too old and he ended up with um um what do you call it um not pancreatic well wait a minute i'll think about it anyway he got cancer and um you know he was 90 some years old but he swore by his Jim Beam. <laughs> yeah, my husband swears by his um, 95, 85% chocolate. It doesn't affect his sugar at all. So what he does is I buy him blueberries. There's very few um, fruit that he can eat that doesn't shoot up his, his um, sugar. And one of them is blueberries that he can eat. Unfortunately, he loves blueberries. So I get him that dark chocolate and his blueberries. And to him, that's just like a delicacy. He loves it. So he sits there and he has his little piece of chocolate and his little blueberries. And he's happy. <laughs> Are you talking to me, Laura? He can't eat strawberries. 
It makes this sugar go crazy. Yeah, my grandparents did that too. If we had a cold or a fever, they call it, they call it a hot toddy, but all it was was whiskey or brandy or something like that. <laughs> That's all NyQuil is. <laughs> you look at how much the content of, of alcohol and NyQuil. Same thing, it just tastes nasty. Yep, Jim Beam every night. No, I remember now. He died of prostate cancer. Oh. It's kind of strange how when something happens to your body, it affects so many different things. <clears throat> yep, Peggy, that's it. <laughs> I understand, Peggy. I've been hungry. I'm sitting here eating this whole dish. Oh, I don't like whiskey. Ugh. There's very few liquors that I like. You know, like wine, I think it smells good, but it gives me an instant headache. I can't drink wine. Beer, I can't stand the smell of it, so I don't drink beer. Um, there's just so many of them. They just, I don't know, they just don't like it. About the only thing, only kind of liquor I like is... Um, I like Kahlua, but then I put that in coffee, right? Uh, I don't I don't drink anything straight. I like that in coffee. I like um I like tequila and margaritas. Um I like Frangelica, I think that tastes good. That tastes good in coffee. What else? I don't know. My husband got this coffee liqueur for me that was chili. It was good. I don't remember the name of it, but it had a big old red chili in the front. It was a white bottle. It was good. I like cheap champagne because I like to make like mimosas out of them. <laughs> so I don't want I don't want to waste expensive champagne. For cold weather, I like the Kiyoki coffee because it has all those coffee like liqueurs in it. I think it's got some brandy or tequila or something in it also. They're pretty good when it's you know cold weather. Oh, yeah, Black Russians. I forgot about that. Those are good. Well, my husband can't drink anymore, so not that he ever really did. Well, he did like red wine. And he liked certain types of um, 
you know, the locally brewed um, beer here at the local local little pub, but in general, he wasn't a drinker. I did see him tipsy one time. I already told you guys that story. Oh my goodness, look what time it is. And all we're doing is talking about food and drinking. <laughs> That's crazy. I might have to have a drink tomorrow after all that rock stuff I'm going to have to do. So, in conclusion, ladies, is there any other suggestions you have for me? Because in the next couple of days, I'm going to put those signatures together. And we'll just eliminate the idea about this for now. These small ones. Take all the pressure off of me. I'm not even going to think about those for now. And we'll just concentrate on this. And I don't think it'll be too thick. No, it still lays good. Good night, Samantha. Ooh. I might have to try one, Jennifer. have to look up the um the recipe because usually it, see it's, it's funny I have liquor right now next door and it just sits there and I never drink until I have company over and then I'll say hey you want me to make a drink and they go okay then I'll have a drink with them but other than that I don't drink and I don't like we don't go out to restaurants anymore because my husband can't eat anything out because every single makes his sugar go up <laughs> So, bye, Mary. Thank you for coming and joining me with supper. <laughs> the rice was good. My sugar is probably 200. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm having fun doing it. We're almost done. Oh, and I found, for those of you that weren't here at the beginning, those of you that were with us last time, remember I told you I thought I had some trim that reminded me of this right here? Well, it's not identical, but I found it. And it's this. And, you know, the colors kind of remind me of the same thing there. So I decided um, I'm just going to use this to wrap around it a couple of times to have it be its closure. So that was kind of cool that I found it. And then I got a couple of messages on the last video and they said that this is cruel. Remember we were talking about what this was? Um, a couple of ladies chimed in and they said, yeah, that's cruel work. And I go, oh, okay. A couple of us thought that, but we weren't too sure. Well, that's what that is. It's going to look pretty cool, huh, when it's done. I think so, too. I think I'll be happy with it. Sometimes I don't, you know, I mean, 
you just you like some things more than others that you make yourself. I think this is gonna look cool. The one I did with the box and all that stuff, that's my favorite. That one's I liked how that one came out too. So I'll probably make another one like that one. Yeah, it does look a little bit like the cantha, huh? But this is velvet. And then um the cruel work on there. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to put, where'd I go? I got it here somewhere. Um, the, the, the back of the latch was broken anyway. It wasn't on the, um, it wasn't on here. Only the front was. So now that it's so thick, you know, um, what I'm afraid to do, this, this is what's going on. Uh, to put it back on, I'm going to have to widen that, which isn't a problem. I can ease that open. But to make it stick, I'm going to have to put that nail back in there, which is going to put a hole in here. And then if it doesn't work, then I'm going to have a, a nail hole in my fabric, which I'm not thrilled about. The other choice would be is if I open this up and I just glue it in there. Because it's not going to be really used anyway because the bottom part of the latch is missing. It would just be decorative. So, um, you know, that's the choice. But I do have the nail. And the way you do it is you open it up a little bit. You put it in and then you squeeze it back. But then, you, you know, you nail it in place. So, we'll see. Yeah, I could always put it in an interior page. That's a good idea. Even if it's just right here on the um whoops. On the inner page there. That might look kind of cool right there. If it doesn't interfere with the pages, I don't know. We'll see. I can just have it stick out a little bit more. Or maybe on the back page and it won't affect the won't affect any of the pages the way it would in the front. Anyway, I've got it. We'll play with it. Whoops. I'll let you guys work on it with me and see what you guys think once we get to that point. On my poor little dollies. <laughs> Beth, <clears throat> you just caught us while we're wrapping up. We've been here for a long time. How long have we been here? <gasps> oh, my goodness. I didn't realize how long I'd been here chitter-chattering with you guys. Beth, I'm so sorry you just got here. Ooh, making paper. What kind? I knew it. I should have said it out loud. I have some of that. Oh, my goodness. Hold on one second. I'll show you what she's making right now. I think. <laughs> this one I thought I knew what I was doing. Oh, yeah, here it is. Here's some. Not all of them. I've used some. what she's making right now or was making hmm. 
handmade paper made out of denim. Look at this. How cool. I know. I know what you're doing. Look how cool that is. Did you get your did you get your heat press? Erin, she's a professional at this. She does not just monkey around those stupid little things like we would do. <laughs> oh, you did. You didn't even mention it. Have you used it yet? Is that how you're drying your um, paper? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I was just telling the ladies that I have a little section here in the front of my studio that's a closed-in port, just very, very small. And so we're going to clear that out in the next couple of weeks and put a, a little work table out there, like a workbench. And I'm going to put my um, mine out there so I can get busy. Where it is, it's not easy to work with. And I just want a designated area just for that. And then I can play with it. Oh, that's right. You got that heated floor. I'm jealous. My, my feet are cold right now. <laughs> and it's not even really cold. It's just me. <laughs> Thanks, Arlene. Thank you for the update. Yeah. I just have dogs. I don't have to, and I don't have to leave for anywhere except move rocks tomorrow. So I'm good. Did you guys already have snow, Beth? A lot of people have already had a bull, like Colorado, I know, had a whole bunch of snow. That was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, well, I think tomorrow they said we might get down to um, 36. It's been in the 60s at night, so that's the big difference. And it's still been like in the high 70s during the day, which to me, that's perfect weather. But it won't last forever. I think we're supposed to, we're supposed to get another um, cold front coming in Wednesday. It's going to bring some chilly rain. Oh, no, go to bed. Remember, those chickens are going to get you up early. <laughs> That's right. Good night. We're going to wrap it up. I'm done. You guys helped me figure out what was going on. You helped me eat my dinner. You helped me come up with um, alcoholic drinks. <laughs> what more can I ask for? 
<laughs> yeah, Beth made this. Isn't it cool? Out of denim. Super duper cool. And this is probably just the sludgy stuff because I think this is watercolor paper. And then she just probably dunked this into the the leftovers. I'm guessing. I don't know. And then this one she embossed. I don't know if you can see that. Well, Jessica, I was going to do the marbled paper for this album, but then I thought, you know, I don't want to rush myself. So this is mixed media. With all those goobers on there. Very cool. Yeah, I um I did the Sumi Nagashi with with the ladies last month. That was fun. But I want to do the um the other um modeling. Does it, oh of course Jessica wants to know if it tears. For collaging. Yep. It tears. Good night, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining the Rowdy Ladies. Yeah, but I'm going to do it the fake way. <laughs> I got some of the fake stuff. And then if I like how it looks, then I'll spring for the good stuff. You want to know the fake way? Hold on. Hold on. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <Stay full. laughs> yeah, you just put that in straight. You don't put anything else in there. That's your water. That's your whole mix. That's a whole kit and caboodle. And then the only thing you have to play around with is the, um, you know, the, the thickness or the thinness, whatever you want to call it, of your acrylic. And see what happens. Yeah. Try it both ways. See which way, you know. Because either way, you still have to play around with the acrylic. No matter, you know, what's in your water, what your base is. You still, it's the same issue. So. Yeah, they are. Exactly. I forget which they are. For some reason, I think the yellows. I don't know why I'm thinking the yellows are heavier. I haven't done the oil on the water. What kind of paper are you going to use?
<laughs> so do you have the alum? Are you going to are you could prepare your paper? Well, when you do when you do the um, when you do the I don't know about the the oil, but when you do the acrylic, you're supposed to um, prepare it with alum to um, for the colors to be bright, or else it just washes away. Not washes away, but yeah, it it dulls it. Oh, you've done the oil, Peggy? See, I haven't done the oil. Where's Beth? I know she's done. She's done all of those. Beth, where are you? We know you've done it. Peggy, you need to do it some more. Show us how to do it. Show us the error of our ways. See, Peg did everything. I guess Beth is gone. But seriously, Beth has done everything. She has a magnificent studio and she's got people that she has these classes that she conducts. <clears throat> Good night, Jennifer. Well, I guess Beth is gone. She's making paper right now, so she's probably over there at her at her beater. <laughs> that thing's gigantic. Go to her go go to her um her page or her um her channel and uh that'll give you the link to her Facebook page and she's got pictures that big old thing she's got in her studio is crazy but yeah she she knows how to do everything and she's very avant-garde about everything she doesn't try to make it like other people's stuff. She has her own way of doing everything. Okay, ladies, I'm going to let you go. Stay flow. <laughs> Be good. Make sure you don't have bed bugs. And I'll be back when I'm back. Like Jessica, we don't schedule. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Good night, everybody.